never changes. When atomic fire consumed the earth, those who survived did so in great underground vaults. When they opened, their inhabitants set out across the ruins of the old world to build new societies, establishing villages, forming tribes. As decades passed, what had been the American Southwest united beneath the flag of the new California Republic, dedicated to old world values of democracy and the rule of law. As the Republic grew, so did its needs. Scouts spread east, seeking territory and wealth in the dry and merciless expanse of the Mojave Desert. They returned with tales of a city untouched by the warheads that had scorched the rest of the world and a great wall spanning the Colorado River. The NCR mobilized its army and sent it east to occupy Hoover Dam and restore it to working condition. But across the Colorado, another society had arisen under a different flag. A vast army of slaves forged from the conquest of 86 tribes, Caesar's Legion. Four years have passed since the Republic held the dam, just barely, against the Legion's onslaught. The Legion did not retreat. Across the river, it gathers strength. Campfires burn, training drums beat. Through it all, the New Vegas Strip has stayed open for business, under the control of its mysterious overseer, Mr. House and his army of rehabilitated tribals and police robots. You are a courier, hired by the Mojave Express to deliver a package to the New Vegas Strip. What seemed like a simple delivery job has taken a turn for the worse. You got what you were after, so pay up. You're crying in the rain, Pally. Guess who's waking up over here? Time to cash out. Will you get it over with? Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink, dig? You've made your last delivery, kid. Sorry you got twisted up in this scene. From where you're kneeling, must seem like an 18-carat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. a second. Get your bearings. Let's see what the damage is. How about your name? Can you tell me your name? <laughs> I can't say it's what I'd have picked for you, but if that's your name, that's your name. I'm Doc Mitchell. Welcome to Good Springs. Now, I hope you don't mind, but I had to go rooting around there in your noggin to pull all the bits of lead out. I take pride in my needlework, but you'd better tell me if I left anything out of place. How'd I do?
most of it right anyway. Stuff that mattered. Okay, no sense keeping you in bed anymore. Let's see if we can get you on your feet. Good. Why don't you walk down to the end of the room? Over by that vigor tester machine there. Take it slow now. It ain't a race. Ooh, looking good so far. Go ahead and give the vigor tester a try. We'll learn right quick if you get back all your faculties. That's a pretty standard score there, but after what you've been through, I'd say that's great news. Well, we know your vitals are good, but that don't mean them bullets didn't leave you nuttered in a bighorn and drop it. What do you say you take a seat in my couch and we go through a couple of questions? See if your dogs are still barking. All right. I'm gonna say a word. I want you to say the first thing that comes to mind. Dog. House. Night. Bandit. Light. Mother. Okay, now I got a few statements. I want you to tell me how much they sound like something you'd say. First one, conflict just ain't in my nature. I ain't given to relying on others for support. I'm always fixing to be the center of attention. I'm slow to embrace new ideas. I charge in to deal with my problems head on. Almost done here. What do you say you have a look at this? Tell me what you see.
Okay. How about this one? Last one. Well, that's all she wrote. I don't have nothing to compare it to, so maybe you'd better just have a look at the results. See if it all seems right to you. Before I turn you loose, I need one more thing from you. I got a form for you to fill out so I can get a sense of your medical history. Just a formality. Ain't like I expect to find you got a family history of getting shot in the head. I guess that about does it. Come with me, I'll see you out. Here, these are yours. Was all you had on you when you was brought in. I hope you don't mind, but I gave the note a look. I thought it might help me find a next of kin. But it was just something about a platinum chip. Well, if you're heading back out there, you ought to have this. They call it a Pip-Boy. I grew up in one of them vaults they made before the war. We all got one. Ain't much use to me now, but you might want such a thing after what you've been through. I know what it's like having something taken from you. And put this on too, so the locals don't pick on you for lack of modesty. Never was much my style anyway. Uh, don't mention it. It's what I'm here for. You should talk to Sunny Smiles before you leave town. She can help you learn to fend for yourself in the desert. She'll likely be at the saloon. I reckon some of the other folks at the saloon might be able to help you out, too. And the metal fella, Victor, who pulled you out of your grave. Anyway, you ever get hurt out there, you come right back. 
I'll fix you up. But try not to get killed anymore. Jed Masterson, and I'm a caravan boss for the Happy Trails Caravan Company. If you're hearing this, I have a job offer for you. Happy Trails is organizing an expedition north into Utah, off the Long 15, and we need people. We're looking for caravan guards, prospectors, couriers. If you're used to humping it across the waste, straight toward trouble, we want you. If you got a pit boy, we definitely want you. On the other hand, if you're a greenhorn or a city slicker spinning tales about your skills, you can kindly go hang. If we like your gumption, we'll pay you square and treat you fair. Find me, Jed Masterson, at the Northern Passage if you're interested. Luck to you. Howdy. My name is Jed Masterson, and I'm a caravan boss... Howdy. What can Easy Pete do for you? The one in the fancy suit seemed to be calling the shots. That's as much as I know. Other folks in town might know more. Word of advice, though. If you ever catch up with him, watch out. The man's got cold eyes like a snake. Can't be trusted, I'd say. Was a prospector until I decided to settle here to get away from the NCR. Now, we'll just take it easy and help out with the Brahmin and Bighorners. Nah, nah. Means I poked through old buildings looking for working tech and such. 
Some folks just call it salvaging, but never like the term. The way I see it, salvage means it's broken, near worthless. Me, I look for the good stuff. Guns, chems, spare parts. Good money in it. Don't get me wrong, the NCR's got a lot of decent folk in it. It's just that they make you part of them whether you like it or not. Towns like Good Springs and Prim don't stay independent for long. Not if you've got something the NCR wants. Still, the NCR keeps the Legion away. The machine? Harmless, no matter what Trudy says. She thinks it's hiding something. But I think it's just a broken down relic with no place to be. Keep your gun handy if you go poking around some of the abandoned places around here, like the schoolhouse. Critters move in there sometimes. Cheyenne, stay. Don't worry, she won't bite unless I tell her to. Yeah, I guess there's a thing or two I could show you. Sounds like you need all the help you can get after what they done to you. Meet me outside, behind the saloon. Hey there. Now, see the sarsaparilla bottles on the fence there? Take this and try to hit a couple of them. That's the right idea. Look down the side. Try crouching down and staying still. It'll help your aim. Nice shot. Well, that's a start. But I don't reckon you came to me to learn to fight sarsaparilla bottles. Tell you what, I gotta go chase geckos away from my water supply anyway. Darn critters are attracted to it. Why don't you come along? Follow me. It's just down to the southeast a short ways.
Hear that up on the ridge behind me there? We got some geckos to clear out. Bunch of little monsters is what they are. Seems like Doc Mitchell treats more gecko bites than anything else. Let's see if we can get a little closer. If we move quietly, we can get the jump on them. More likely to hit something vital that way. Okay, you're on. Go give him hell. See? You're getting the hang of it. There's two more wells that still need clearing. You want, you can come along. It'd be worth a few caps to me. I don't blame you. They're good eating, but that's about it. I'm heading back now. Hope I didn't miss anything good on the jukebox. Cheyenne would never forgive me. Hey, do me a favor. Trudy, she's the bartender up at the Prospector. Kind of the town mom. She likes to meet newcomers. She'd be cross with me if I didn't ask you to poke your head in and say hi. Done being nice. If you don't hand Ringo, what do you want? He's some trader who decided he'd rather shoot than pay the toll for being in our territory. He's hiding somewhere in town. Would serve these idiots right if me and my guys shot the place up after we got payback on Ringo. It is now. Me and the rest of the guys busted out of the NCR prison east of here and took over. Now we're calling the shots. Let me get out of town before we talk. Too many unfriendly ears around. Yeah. Morning. Well, you've been causing quite a stir. Glad I finally got to meet you. Welcome to the Prospector Saloon. I'm sure I've got something you like. Looks like our little town got itself dragged into the middle of something we don't want anything to do with. About a week ago, this traitor, Ringo, comes into town. Survivor of an attack, he says. Bad men after him. Needs a place to hide. We figured he was just in shock. So we gave him a place to lie low. We didn't actually expect anyone to come after him. 
He's holed up at the abandoned gas station up the hill. You mean murder him? That's not our way, even if Cobb is scum. He can bluster and threaten all he wants. Some of the others, like Sonny, will probably stand up for Ringo if he asks for help, which he hasn't. Personally, I hope he sneaks out of town one night and takes the powder gangers with him. Chang gangs, really. The NCR brought them in from California to work on the rail lines. Problem is, it turns out that giving convicts a bunch of dynamite and blasting powder isn't the best idea. It was a big escape not too long ago. Some of them stuck together so they could make trouble. That's what we're dealing with now. All right. If you were able to get Ringo out of this mess, you'd have a decent reputation around Good Springs. I'd even set you up with a discount. Of course, helping Ringo would also make the powder gangers mad. And they've got a lot of friends out there. Don't know why you'd want to do a thing like that. Yep, you'd get on their good side, but people around here wouldn't appreciate it one bit. Not much, other than they're a bunch of freeloaders who expected a few rounds on the house. I was able to get them to pay up, though. Of course, one of the great cons did knock my radio to the floor by accident, and it hasn't been working since. They were having some kind of argument about it, but the guy in the checkered coat kept shushing them. Sounded like they came in from the north through Quarry Junction. If that's the case, I can't say I blame them for not wanting to go back. That whole area is overrun with the kind of critters that just get mad if you shoot them. Merchants avoid that whole stretch of I-15 like it's radioactive, which it could be for all I know. I didn't hear exactly, but the leader was talking about the strip. Fella wants to get there and avoid the 15, he'd have to go east. Take Highway 93 up. He's a convict, just without the chains. Said his name was Cobb. Powder gangers is what they call themselves. Plenty more like him out there. I know that thing as much as anyone else around here. It mostly keeps to itself, which is just fine by me. It acts friendly enough, but I don't trust that whole cheerful cowboy act. I find it all very creepy. Other than rolling around once in a while, it doesn't do anything useful as far as I can tell. I don't know why it took an interest in you, but I'd be careful. It's never helped anyone before. Fine by me. Sure, the outside looks okay, but I think something broke on the inside. There'd be caps in it for you. I do like to hear what's going on in the world. And that Mr. New Vegas seems like such a gentleman. Be careful out there. Hey!
Howdy. That's close enough. Who are you, and what do you want with me? Sorry about the gun. You just caught me off guard, that's all. We got off to a bad start. What say we start over with a friendly game of Caravan? You know how to play? Yeah. He doesn't look very tough, though. I hear he's afraid I'll shoot him down from one of the windows when I see him. And he's right. I'll have a much bigger problem once his friends show up. There's no way I could handle all of them in a gunfight. My caravan was on the return trip from California, and heading back to the company branch in New Vegas when we got jumped. Not even a drop your weapons and hands up before the bullets started flying. We put up a good fight, but there was too many of them. I took a few of the bandits down before I ran, so I figure their friends are out for revenge. I'm gonna lay low for as long as I can, assuming the town doesn't throw me to the wolves. I've got no chance against the gang on my own. We'd just end up sharing the same grave if it's just the two of us. Now, if some of the other people in town were also on board... Start with Sunny Smiles. She's been friendlier than most around here. Hi there. Sticking around Good Springs for a while longer? Say no more. I'm in. Joe Cobb talks about leaving us alone if we hand over Ringo. But I know his type. He and his friends will come after the town eventually. However, between you, me, and Ringo, we aren't exactly a force to be reckoned with. A lot of people around here look up to Trudy. If you could convince Trudy to join us, some of the folks in town might decide to help out as well. I know Easy Pete's got a stock of dynamite somewhere, and Chet just got a shipment of leather armor we could borrow. Talk to them as well. Finally, there's a good chance we'll all end up with extra holes in us. So if Doc Mitchell could cough up some extra stim packs, that'd be great. A silver tongue would help. Convincing Trudy that we had a good plan to win the fight would also help. I don't think give is in Chet's vocabulary. Even with the town at stake, he'd still make you barter with him. Easy Pete's pretty protective of his dynamite. You'd have to convince him you know a thing or two about explosives before he handed it over. Sure can. Take the road southeast out of town till it hits the freeway. Prim is the town with a roller coaster straight south. Can't miss it. NCR patrols do a good job of keeping the highway clear but I'd keep your gun where you can reach it easily. You never know who you'll run into. Off the road, you'll probably start running into hostile wildlife. My advice would be to stick to the highway when you can. I'll be waiting.
Hey, partner. Might I say you're looking fit as a fiddle? Trouble with rustlers, huh? Count me in, partner. Those varmints will be running home with their tails between their legs soon enough. I was out for a stroll that night when I heard the commotion up the old bone orchard. Saw what looked like a bunch of bad eggs, so I laid low. Once they'd run off, I dug you up to see if you were still kicking. Turns out you were, so I hauled you off to the dock right quick. Don't mention it. I'm always ready to lend a helping hand to a stranger in need. Can't say that I'm familiar with the rascals. Some of the fine folks in town might be able to help you out with that. I moseyed into town, oh, 10, 15 years ago. Before that, I... Um, I can't quite seem to recall. Odd. Anyway, it's a right peaceful town, and I reckon it's as fine a place to settle as any. I'm a Securitron. Robco Security Model 2060B. If you ever see any of my brothers, tell them Victor says howdy. Happy trails!
Hey, where the hell do you think you're going? Prim is off limits. Some convicts from the prison up the road have taken over the town. Everyone inside is either dead or in hiding. What's more, there are two tribes of raiders causing trouble in this area as well. You'd be safer heading back up to Good Springs. We'd love to, but they don't fall under NCR jurisdiction. Even if they did, we're in no shape to protect them. We don't have the equipment to take out the convicts. And even if we did, we need some extra hands for backup. You should talk to Lieutenant Hayes. He's in a tent down the road. Just stay on the west side of the overpass if you don't want to get shot. I don't know what it was brought you to Prim, youngster, but you might want to rethink your plans. Town's gone to hell. Johnson Nash is my name. Husband to Ruby Nash. Lived in Prim going on eight years now, thick and thin. I'm a trader primarily, for what it's worth with things like they are. I also run the local Mojave Express outpost. Well, I don't got any work right now, sorry to say. I'll tell you whatever I can. You have a delivery order you can show me? Oh, so you're talking about one of them packages. That job had strange written all over it, but we couldn't turn down the caps. That cowboy robot had us hire six couriers. Each was carrying something a little different. A pair of dice, chess piece, that kind of stuff. Last word I have in the office, 
it looked like payment had been received for the other five jobs. Guess it was just your chip that didn't make it. First deadbeat we hired to do the job canceled. Hope a storm from the divide skins him alive. Well, that's where you came in. Yeah, I got this look when he saw you next down on the courier list. His expression turned right around, asked me if your name was for real. I said, sure as lack of rain, you were still kicking. Then he turned down the job, just like that. I asked if he was sure it was good money. No, let Courier 6 carry the package, that's what he said. Like the Mojave'd sort you out or something. Then he just up and walked out. No idea. Sounds like you two had a history for him to act like that. And turn down the money, too. Hope he didn't see any trouble in that package of yours. Maybe he thought your name was bad luck. Enough for me to say. Well, now that you mentioned it, a few nights back, one of the townies was out scavenging for supplies. He said he saw a fellow with a daisy suit come through with some of them great con misfits. They was talking about a chip. Well, for that, your best bet is going to be talking to Deputy Beagle. Since they came to town, he was keeping a good bit of notes on them, and he was slinking around Bison Steve when your pretty boy friend came through. He may have heard where they were going. I guess I don't have anywhere better to be. A Beagle had some notes he was taking while he was eavesdropping around the Potter gangsters. He'll be your best source of information on that subject. Sure, I'll tell you what I know. Don't go getting yourself shot.
I don't suppose you came here to rescue me. I'd cross my fingers, but my hands are numb. Why, yes I am. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm in a bit of a predicament here. I'd be most appreciative if you'd set me free. I must say it's been the low point of my career in law enforcement. The powder gangers stole into town at night and murdered my sister and her husband, the sheriff, in bed while I was sleeping in the office. I watched them for a bit, waiting for the right moment to pounce and arrest a lot of them, taking careful notes as I watched. To my dismay, they found me while I waited in the shadows and brought me here. Indeed I do, good sir. And I would be thrilled to share that information with you as soon as I am released from captivity. Oh, that's just marvelous. I think I'll be making my way outside now. The air is a little close in here. Oh, that's so gracious of you to offer to bodyguard me like that. But I'd only slow you down. See you outside. Well, that was quite an adventure. We taught those convicts a thing or two, didn't we? Breaking myself out of a hostage situation. Not to diminish your role in it, of course, but it was quite thrilling. Problem is, there's still no law in Prim. What are we to do the next time ruffians menace us and hold us hostage? Ah, yes. My memory is much clearer now that I'm free from my bondage. I was uh, performing recon, gathering information on some of the powder gangers, when some great cons arrived with your friend in the suit. They were talking about some delivery they took from a courier. I assume that was you? They said they'd be heading through Nipton to Novak to meet a contact there.
had enough? If it weren't for the water caravans, Novak would have turned the dust a long time ago. No offense, but I need to focus on getting more rest when I'm off duty. I'm not sleeping so good. So now's not a good time. If you want to talk, catch me when I'm on duty. I'm up at the dinosaur after 9 p.m. Yeah. Caravans, Novak would have turned to dust a long time ago. If it weren't for the water caravans, Novak would have turned to dust a long time ago. Between you and me, I don't think she studied at an accredited institution. She hasn't paid me anything. What can I do for you? Yeah, and I need sterile medical supplies. But let's see what I have with me. Bye. Yeah, should I be worried? Well, welcome to you. You look tired from the road. Why don't you relax a spell? Let this fine town take care of you. Oh, what am I doing? 
I got to thinking about making a good impression and plain forgot to tell you my name. I'm Jeannie May. I take care of folks here at the motel, long as they aren't troublemakers. We're in a little desert oasis, name of Novak. This is the Dino Delight Motel, and it's mine. Well, he might have been wearing a fancy outfit, but he wasn't any kind of gentleman to me. Had his nose stuck so high in the air you couldn't see it above the clouds. City folk. They always think they deserve better than what they got. Those hoodlums he was with seemed to know Manny for some reason. He's our daytime sniper, up in the dinosaur's mouth. Well, there's Dinky, the town mascot. He's a sight. You probably already saw him when you came in, but you can go up inside, too. Up the roadways to the west, there's Repcon. That's the old rocket factory. There's been some sinister characters out there lately, so you may want to stay clear. Other than that, nothing to do but take it easy and enjoy good company. Well, up north a ways, you'll see a big tower. That's Helios 1. Used to be a power plant in its day. And there's a town just east of here called Nelson. Used to be such a quaint little place until those slavers took it over. But we got our wonderful snipers keeping an eye in that direction, and so far, the slavers have left us alone. Watch out for strangers. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit if it ain't my old friend from Good Springs. Don't rightly know. I just got the notion to make my way to New Vegas. Reckon I'll find out when I get there. Seeing how this is the only road around, I'd be a sight more surprised if we didn't run into each other from time to time. No, don't believe I did. But you might ask around. The Novak folk usually see anyone traveling this way. Be seeing you. No offense, but I need to focus on getting more rest when I'm off duty. If you want to... Yeah. Welcome. Come Welcome to the Dino Bite gift shop. My name's Cliff. If you're here for the T-Rex figurines, you're just in time. There's still a few left. Well, there's T-Rex figurines, of course. That's our bread and butter. We also have an assortment of the Repcon factory souvenirs, rockets, things of that nature. Come back soon now. What's going on, man? Sure I know him. What do you want with him? Must be something pretty important to be chasing a guy like that. Well, listen, I can definitely help you find him, but I've got problems of my own. Maybe we can do a trade. You need my help. There's something I need, too. Yeah, I... Everybody depends on you, you know? But they don't ask you about how you feel, what you worry about. There's something I like about you. You just seem really understanding. I was gonna ask you for a favor, but I'll just tell you what you want to know. The guy you're looking for, Benny, he was traveling with some members from my old gang. They were going to Boulder City. No clue. I know Benny hadn't paid up yet. Maybe that was where they were supposed to get square. It's straight up Route 93 from here. Just keep following the road north. Glad I could help. Hey, I know you've got no reason to help me out now, but you seem really nice. Could I at least tell you about the problem we've got here? 
See? I was right about you. Novak, it's home for me now. I want that to be for good. I like it here, and I've left too many homes behind. But the only resource we got here is junk. Without that, people wouldn't have anything to trade. They'd all have to leave. We get most of it up the road from the old rocket test site, but a bunch of ghouls showed up one day and took it over. We can't get in there now. Well, they gotta go, or this'll be a ghost town before long. Doesn't matter to me what you do. As long as the ghouls are out of there, that's good enough for me. It'd mean a lot to me. Yeah, see ya. We've got a situation with some great cons right now. The Brass of McCarran has ordered me to lock down the ruins until it's been resolved. One of my patrols was on its way back from Novak when it came under fire from the great cons. They radioed for reinforcements, but instead of waiting for us, they chased the cons into the ruins where they were caught in a crossfire. No deaths, but not all the squad got out. The cons have Private Ackerman and Private Gilbert as hostages. Once the Great Khans have been killed or captured, you're welcome to retrieve any property they've taken from you. Normally I'd turn you down since I have no idea who you are, but considering that the hostages are as good as dead when we attack... All right, I'm going to give you a chance to talk to the Great Khans. Their leader is a man named Jessup. If we hear shooting, we'll be coming in, but it'll probably be too late for you. Good luck. Courier Benny wasted back in Good Springs. You're supposed to be dead. Yeah, uh, about that. Don't have it. Benny stole it right before he stabbed us in the back. He's probably back at the strip by now, laughing at me. What's to negotiate? The NCR backs off. We walk out of here. Nobody gets hurt. I can't believe I'm doing this. But all right, the hostages can go. The NCR had better keep their end of the deal, though. Here, a souvenir for you. It's Benny's lighter. Shove it up his ass when you catch up with him. Eh, yeah, go on.
I'm glad you're able to get my people freed, but there's a new problem. I just got orders to take out the Great Khans, hostages or not. My hands are tied. I can't go against orders, can I? You're right. The Great Khans are free to go. You look new to Freeside, so here's a little advice, friend. Don't go past the Southgate greeter without talking to it first. Those bots are programmed to vaporize anyone who enters the fenced-in area without authorization from the greeter. The name's Old Ben. I've been living in Freeside since the day I was born. Talk to you later. Submit to a credit check, or present your passport before proceeding to the gate. Trespassers will be shot. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. Vaporization subroutine initiated. Unauthorized entry detected. Hey, partner, you've come for a piece, haven't you? Welcome to New Vegas. Consider me your personal welcome wife. Now hear this. The head honcho of New Vegas, Mr. House, is itching to make your acquaintance. Just head for the Lucky 38. It's the big old tower shaped like a roulette spinner. yeah partner. That's his spirit. He'll be waiting for you. That's it, TV. Well, howdy, partner. Good to see you again. Boss is waiting for you upstairs, so get a move on. Come back soon now. Where to, partner? Penthouse floor. This meeting has been a long time coming, hasn't it? You've come a long ways, literally, and, I suspect, figuratively as well. I have to ask, now that you've reached your destination, what do you make of what you see? Of course you haven't. Vegas always was one of a kind. What you see down on the Strip is just a fraction of the city's former glory, and yet, more than an echo. I preserved its spirit. Or perhaps you were referring to the Lucky 38? The years haven't been kind to her, but still she manages to impress. Oh, don't be coy. You've been 
playing a high-stakes game ever since Victor dug you out of the ground. Don't be afraid to admit it. The business is this. One of my employees has stolen an item of extraordinary value from me. And I want it recovered. Simple enough. My only concern is the recovery of the Platinum Chip. What happens to Benny, I leave to your discretion. When you bring the chip to me, I will pay you four times the delivery bonus stipulated in your contract. How's that? Very well. Five times the bonus. Not one cap more. Well enough. Return to me when you have the Platinum Chip in your possession. Any final matters for us to discuss? Until then. Congratulations, partner. The boss has instructed me to comp you to the high roller suite. You can bring your friends too. Be like a little clubhouse for the gang you put together. Just bear in mind, you're the only one gets to see the boss. Any friends you got, they can wait in the suite. Enjoy the digs, partner. They're plenty fancy. Casino floor. Hey, you there. I have a message for you. It's from Ambassador Crocker. Very important. Here you go. Welcome to the NCR Embassy. How can I help you? Ambassador Crocker can be found in his office through the door to my right and at the end of the hall. Sir? I'm glad you could make it. I have something I wanted to discuss with you. It's a very important matter, and I have a strong feeling you're the perfect person for the job. I'm sure you've noticed that things are a little tense around here with all the issues between the NCR, the Legion, and Mr. House. It doesn't take a genius to see that something big is going to happen soon. To be honest with you, the NCR is in a tight spot. But if we fail now, it's the people here that are going to suffer the most. I'm not willing to let that happen, and I don't think you're the kind of person that would either. To the northeast is a settlement. The locals here call them boomers. They are sitting on a munition stockpile that would be invaluable to us. I would like you to get in contact with them and then do whatever it takes to convince them to help us. Unfortunately, the boomers keep to themselves and are, let's say, hostile to all outsiders. That's why I need someone like you. Someone with your background and reputation would have a better chance of reaching them than anyone I have available. In exchange for your help, 
you would receive complete amnesty for any past crimes against the NCR, as well as additional benefits and perks. Do you think you would be able to do this for me? Much appreciated. Once you've talked to them, come back and let me know if they will help us. Goodbye. Hey, fellow, welcome to the Tops Hotel and Casino. I'm gonna have to ask you to hand over any weapons you might be carrying. Them's the brakes. You want in, you don't bring the guns. Smooth and easy, just the way I like it. Don't worry, they'll be as safe as kittens till you're ready to leave. Oh, and a friendly word of advice. If you happen to stumble across any weapons during your stay here, well, just don't wear them openly. You dig? Now that we got that little business out of the way, what can I do to make your tops experience the tops? Have a good time, baby. What in the goddamn? Let's keep this in the groove, hey? Smooth moves, smooth. Hello. The guy everyone saw go in the Lucky 38, that was you? Oh, shit. I hit what I was aiming for. Guess you had brains to spare. Or you just thick-skulled. Either way, baby, this is good news. Maybe I can finally sleep at night. Knowing you didn't die. What say you and me cash out? Go somewhere it's more private like. Any questions you got, I'll answer. To start, I'll comp you the presidential. Best suite in the house. You deserve a taste of the VIP lifestyle. I'll hang out down here for a while to make everything look business as usual, then come to you. Any questions you got, I'll answer. Guaranteed. If that's what it takes to win your trust, that's what it takes. Follow me. Keep those hands where I can see them. Now that you and me's got some privacy, I gotta ask, how is it that you're still living? Luck is for losers, baby. Someone pulled strings. Once you were vertical, how'd you track me down? 
To think I deemed that flint box my lucky charm. Oh, the irony. I guess that's enough scratching around at first base. Tell me, which way is the wind gonna blow? You've got a crazy drop on me here, baby. That's for sure. If killing's what you came for, this would be the time. But baby, you'd be disappointing me. All the trouble you went through to arrange this shindig must be something more you're after. You got questions, I got answers. It's the house edge, baby. Literally. It's what Mr. House needs to stack the odds in his favor. Baby, ease off the gas. The chip belongs in the hands of someone who can use it, as in me, not you. You'll get a piece of the action and a sweet one, but the chip sticks with me. You help me and before long the chairman will rule all of Vegas, dig? With enough robot muscle to back it up. You'll get a sweet juicy cut of that action. But until that day comes, I'll keep you on retainer and pay bonuses for special missions. How's that sound? How else can I clue you in? Like I said, once the chairman are running Vegas, you'll get a percentage. Until then, I'll pay you a retainer and bonuses for special missions. I know, you figured me for a creep. It's your prerogative. If you change your mind, come find me on the casino floor. In the meantime, the presidential is yours whenever you want it. Adios.
The eyes of the mighty Kaisar are upon you. He admires your accomplishments and bestows upon you the exceptional gift of his mark. Any crimes you may have perpetrated against the Legion are hereby forgiven. Kaisar will not extend this mercy a second time. My lord requires your presence at his camp at Fortification Hill. His mark will guarantee your safe conduct through our lands. I am Wulpes in Kulta of Kaisar's Legion. I serve my master as the greatest of his frumentari. Go to him, and you will understand. Seek Kaisar by way of Cottonwood Cove, south of Nelson. The Corsor Lucullus will be waiting. Patrol on the Mojave almost makes you wish for the nuclear war. Where to, partner? So, Benny has been handled, and you've recovered the platinum chip. Let's have it. Such a small thing, isn't it? And yet so capacious, so very dear. Decades of hiring salvagers out west to search for this little relic in the ruins of a place called Sunnyvale back then. Anyway, that's where the chip was printed, on October 22nd, 2077. It was to have been hand-delivered to me here at the Lucky 38 the next day. But the bombs fell first. Suffice it to say, the delivery was never made. A great deal shall be happening. A cascade of events with you taking a central role. At the moment, however, all you need to do is take the elevator all the way down to the bottom level. You'll understand soon enough. Step closer to the demonstration area, if you would. I expect you're well familiar with my Securitrons by now. The titanium alloy housing that protects its electronic core deflects small arms and shrapnel easily enough. Its X-25 Gatling laser produced to spec by Glastinghouse Inc. is deadly against soft targets at medium range. And for close range suppression or crowd control, the Securitron is armed with a 9mm submachine gun. All of this you probably already knew. What you did not know is that these are the Securitron's secondary weapons. All this time, my Securitrons have had to get by running the Mark I operating system, which lacked software drivers for their primary weapons. Today, with the delivery of the Platinum chip, all that changes. Behold, for the first time, Securitron's running the Mark II OS. The M235 missile launcher gives the Securitron the ability to engage ground-to-air targets at significantly longer ranges. 
and a rapid-fire G-28 grenade launcher ensures the Securitron is deadly in close-range engagements. The software upgrade also includes drivers for the Securitron's highly sophisticated onboard auto repair systems. Altogether, the Mark II software upgrade confers a 235% increase in combat effectiveness per unit. The city of New Vegas finally has soldiers worthy of protecting it. Return to the penthouse now. We have much to discuss. Trips to the basement are rarely so educational, don't you think? I've since broadcast the upgrade to every Securitron in range of my transmitters, and I must say, it's causing quite a stir down on the strip. I'm surprised you can still underestimate me after everything you've seen. I haven't shown my hand. I've shown one card. I've given my enemies a single provocative datum upon which to fixate. They have no idea what other cards I'm holding. It's a strong hand, believe me. I dealt it to myself. To secure the future of New Vegas, I must have your assistance. The work ahead is dangerous, but you weather danger well. The next step will require you to infiltrate Caesar's camp at Fortification Hill. Absolutely not. Caesar is of great use to me. I don't want you harming a hair on that man's head, assuming you could find one. I want you to open a hatch in the basement of the derelict weather station atop Fortification Hill. You'll recognize it on sight. The hatch bears the logo of the Lucky 38. Same as the Platinum Chip. You can't, but the chip can. The hatch will recognize the Platinum Chip and... Open Sesame. Something very important. I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise, so don't bother asking. Here, take the Platinum Chip again. You will need it. Upon arrival at the fort, it's likely that you'll be searched and the chip taken from you. Don't worry, it will come back to you. Enjoy your time in Vegas. Penthouse floor. Casino floor. Excuse me, but are you the courier who caused all of that trouble in the tops? Oh, well, I heard, I mean, we heard, we meaning the followers of the apocalypse, that you had been in there, the Lucky 38, I mean, and we were wondering if you could help us, if it's not too much trouble, of course. This is important enough to the followers that we scraped together the caps required for the credit check. And I'm staying at Vault 21, which is pretty cheap, for the strip anyway. Oh, great. The followers of the apocalypse, well, some of us anyway, have been interested in Mr. House's technology. How he stays alive. Of course, no one else is allowed inside the Lucky 38, so no one knows what's going on. Well, except for you. Right. 
We just want to find out what sort of technology Mr. House has used to stay alive for all these years. It could be of great benefit to the people we try to help, many of whom suffer from hard-to-diagnose illnesses. Really? Oh, I wasn't expecting you to agree so easily. That's great. Here, take this packet sniffer. It'll allow us to intercept data on Mr. House's network. You might have to manually remove the encryption from his data network, but hopefully you won't have too much trouble. Good luck. If it can be bought, it can be found at Mick and Ralph's. If it can be bought, it can be found at Mick and Ralph's. You've done a good turn for the NCR, and now we'd like to do one for you. There's an NCR emergency two-way radio. You call, and we'll come run it. You're not alone out here. The NCR has your back. Stay safe and good hunting.
Halt! What business have you in Cottonwood Cove, outsider? You were the mark of Kaisar. You must be who Cursor Lucullus is waiting for. You may continue, but be warned. Mark or no, we will not tolerate aggressive action by visitors in the camp. Are you ready to head up river? The trip will take a few hours. Take your place on the boat. By order of Kaisar, all visitors must disarm and relinquish all banned items. This order also extends to the platinum chip you carry. For now. Your belongings will be returned to you when you leave. to Kaisar. So I finally get to meet the courier who's accomplished so much in so little time. That's why I summoned you here, right? I mean, a man nearly kills you, and your response is to track him across the breadth of the Mojave? You arrive on the strip and waltz into the Lucky 38 like someone left you a key under the doormat? You assassinate the head of the chairman in his own casino and get away with it? Then something happens to Mr. House's robot, some kind of military upgrade? When you set your mind to something, you get results. I like that. The question is, are you ready to get started? The time is fast approaching when my legion will assault the Great Dam and invade the West. Before that happens, I want Mr. House knocked out of the game. A quick one-two punch, with you doing the punching. Down the hill, at the west edge of camp, is an old building. It was here when the fort was taken in 2277. Inside the building is a hatch. 
And inside that hatch are two steel doors that bear the sigil of the Lucky 38 Casino. Now that same sigil is on the platinum chip you were carrying. Isn't that interesting? Even more interesting, there's a slot about the same size as the chip on the console that opens the hatch. So you know what I think? I think the platinum chip opens those doors. Doors that can't be pried open or drilled open or blasted open. Because all that, I tried. I want you to destroy whatever you find in there. And then I want you to come back here and tell me about it. So go to the building and take this fucking platinum chip with you. My legionaries will meet you there with your weapons and equipment. Goodbye. Caesar's permission. Kaisar has permitted your weapons to be returned to you while you serve him. Kaisar has put a lot of trust in you. Be worth it. Some of the slaves have been spreading stories about the burned man again. I see you reached your destination safely. Shall we get to work? As you know, the Platinum Chip upgrades my Securitron's operating software. Well, there's an army of them here. The Securitron's policing this strip are a fraction of the total number manufactured. The rest I stored here. I need you to manually upload the data from the chip to the facility's primary computer. There's a terminal at the other end of this facility. There's a complication. While I can broadcast to this screen, I can't control any of the facility's systems. That means I can't deactivate its security bots, most of which appear to be active according to the status board I'm looking at. My army will do what an army does best, defend territory from invaders, and maintain order. The same equipment failure that prevents me from remotely operating this facility seems to have activated its security robots and turrets. There's a security room near the base of the stairs. Perhaps you can deactivate them yourself. Good. I won't hold you up any longer. Hostile 
target detected. Put down your weapons and submit to authority. You've carried out Kaisar's will, but I must confiscate your equipment again. You are free to leave.
Some of the slaves have been spreading stories about the burned man again. I felt the ground shake a while ago. I'll take that as a sign you've got the job done. Let's press on, shall we? As I was telling you before, I want Mr. House out of the picture. You have an interest in his death, too. If he knows that you destroyed his gadgets beneath the fort, he will strike back. You know where to find him. How he dies, I leave up to you. Complete your mission, then return to me. Some of the slaves have been spreading stories about the... The foundation is laid. My Securitrons on the Strip are upgraded, and those at the fort ready for action. Now it's just a matter of adjusting the attitudes of some lesser groups, while we wait for Caesar's Legion to attack Hoover Dam. Outside New Vegas, at what was once called Nellis Air Force Base, resides an unusual tribe known as the Boomers. They are, shall we say, aggressively reclusive. They have several howitzers they fire at anyone who dares approach the base. Artillery of this sort has a range of several miles. If it's going to fire on Hoover Dam, I want it firing at my targets. If not, 
Then I want to make sure that the boomers don't sign similar treaties to fire their guns in support of the NCR or Caesar's Legion. Use extreme caution when approaching the base. Their firepower is considerable. Recently, one of my roaming Securitrons observed a man near the base studying the pattern of its artillery fire. Maybe he's learned something. Hold it right there. Don't you move. How the hell did you survive that bombardment? But I had you zeroed in the whole time. Nobody's that fast. Move a muscle now and I'll blow you to pieces. Then just... just stay where you are. Raquel will be here any second. I'll take this from here. I'm Raquel, Master at Arms for the Nellis Homeland. Mother Pearl, our eldest, wishes to speak to you. Follow close, and mind your behavior. Welcome, child. Took your sweet time getting here, didn't you? I've been waiting a good five years for an outsider to come along and visit. Oh, so many ways. Small ones to begin with, so we can get used to what it's like to have a sev... Uh, outsider around and about. Should that go well, it may be you can help in big ways, too. We'll have to see. You have to keep in mind that you're our first contact with the outside world since I was barely a woman. Seclusion has kept us safe, but the world around us is changing. Neon lights in the distance, patrolling robots, soldiers, my youngers think our guns can keep out the world, but I think we need to let it in just a little, or become its victim. You're that little bit of the world, child. Welcome to Nellis. You picked a good time to stop by, for we're swimming in problems. My youngers can tell you all about it. Raquel could use help with the bug problem. Doc Argyle has wounded he's tending to. And Loyal and Jack might be looking for help with some repairs. Or you could just go see Pete at the museum and hear the story of our people. All you have to do there is listen. Come and go as you like, help or don't help, I leave it up to you. But I hope you'll show my youngers that not every outsider needs to be blown up. How is your visit with us going, stranger? I haven't heard anything. You must not be trying hard enough. Bye.
I know Mother Pearl is letting you wander Nellis as you please, outsider, but I have patience to tend to. I have three patients here who were gravely injured fighting those giant ants in the generator building a few days ago. I've stabilized their wounds, but they're in bad shape. Do you have medical training? Don't apologize. Their care is my responsibility. But everything I know came from an old first aid field manual. I don't know what else to do to help them. Later. should get out of my face. You're the outsider. Mother Pearl sent word that you'd be stopping by. You must be eager to hear the story of our people. Gosh, there's a lot of folks. Argyle's our doctor. He could use help tending to any injured we got. Over at the workshop, Loyal and Jack are always building something. The Loyal may not be too happy to see your kind running around Nellis. So long. Were you interested in hearing the story? Me? I'm Pete, keeper of the story. I know I seem kind of young. I was the apprentice keeper of the story until a couple months ago. But old keeper Don, well, whiskey and landmines don't go together. So it's up to me. I bet you want to know everything about us. Wonderful. I'm sure you've noticed the mirror on the wall of this hut. Shall I tell you what it all means? Excellent. Imagine you're the first outsider to ever hear our tale. <clears throat> ago, long before I was born, we lived underground. Everyone had guns, but the overseer wouldn't let us explode anything, not even a hand grenade. We left and wandered the wastes. There were savages with knives. We blew them up with frag mines and grenades, burned them with flamethrowers. It was neat, but there was a downside. For every 43.6 savages we killed, we lost one of our own. We needed a new home. We needed Nellis. Here we have prospered and multiplied. Here our mighty guns destroy any savages who might try to harm us before they can even reach our gates. Well, until... But... Not saying you want to harm us or you're a savage, but anyways... Nellis has revealed many secrets. It has taught us how to fly the bombers once based here, and it has taught us where to find one. And that is our story so far. For this last image is our future. To restore the bomber, to fly the open skies in armored safety, running high explosive ordnance upon ignorant savages. This is our destiny. I'm pleased that you listened to the entire story. Perhaps there are details you'd like to know more about. Let me know.
Hello. Mother Pearl's instructions are clear. You can move freely around Nellis, and artillery spotters have orders not to fire on you. These are extraordinary privileges. Don't abuse them. Long story short, the power failed a few days ago because giant ants have tunneled into the generator room and set up a nest. I led a team down to exterminate them, but there were so many of them. We lost. Two killed, three wounded. Personally, I think it's more than a savage can handle. But if you want to kill those ants and switch the power back on, feel free. Sure, anyone can. But there's more than a few down there. See for yourself. But one other thing. The ants must be eating gunpowder from the munitions down there. Or something. They exploded when hit by a flamethrower. One of us was using a laser pistol. Same thing. Bullets seem okay, just don't hit the artillery shells. Loyal's been working on some kind of weapon to use against them. Maybe you should check with him.
Hey. I see the power's back on. The ants are all dead? Maybe Pearl is right about you. Because I don't know how you pulled that off. I'll tell Loyal to send someone down to clear out the eggs and repair the generators. Good work. Thumbs tend to get blown off around here. What is it, outsider? The next time you leave Nellis, keep an eye out for missiles. We're down to a five year supply for our launchers. Come find me when you've got some to turn in. How many? What? Hey. Always nice to see you. Yes, Outsider? I have three patients. I've stabilized their wounds, but they're in... Well, I don't know, actually. I suppose it's possible. You should take a look. I hope Pearl knows what she's doing, letting you wander around Nellis as you please. If that's so, how about you look into repairing the solar arrays on the roof of the generator building? Nothing too complicated about it, but it's a long ways to walk my old bones, and there's been that ant problem over near there. You can't miss the array. It's on top of the generator building smack dab in the middle of Nellis between the two runways. Are you talking about that damn bright light we've seen blast off to the south occasionally? I was wondering what the hell that was. If they've got the parts, bring them on back. 
We need to get the array back up and charging. Be sure to stop on back and let me know when the arrays are fixed. Now that you know the story of our people, you must have all sorts of questions. Ask away. Once we restore power, we learn that some elaborate chairs we've been sleeping in were actually virtual reality simulators. We believe they were used to train combat pilots. We use them extensively. I alone have shot down over 500 Chinese, Zion 85 fighters. Before you ask, I'm afraid there's no way you can be allowed to use the simulators. They're for our use only. Sorry. That's beautiful. Yes, it's exactly like that. So free, so... Words can't do it justice. Anything else you want to know? Loyal found a file somewhere on the base, with magazine articles, photographs, a map even. It seems that a bomber, apparently the 29th of its kind, crashed in Lake Mead on July 21st, 1948. Just imagine, that's over 300 years ago. The photograph shows that it was basically intact, and the map tells us exactly where to find it, except we haven't left Nellis in decades. Yes. In fact, that's exactly what Loyal has planned to do. You should go talk to him. Anything else you want to know? So you know about the vaults? Yes, we lived in one of those. Ours was number 34. In our vault, everyone had guns. But the overseer wouldn't let you fire off any of the really fun ones. I guess all the little pops and bangs at the firing ranges just got boring after a while. Exactly. We haven't detonated any atomic warhead since before I was born. But besides that, it's a heck with nitpicky restrictions. Anything else you want to know? Several automatic warheads detonate here a hundred years ago, leaving the base highly radioactive. The savages of the waste, ignoramuses, all avoided Nellis by habit. That's exactly right. You're very knowledgeable for a Sav, an outsider. Anything else you want to know? Nellis is a completely self-sufficient community. We draw water from Lake Mead, solar arrays provide power, and we grow our own crops. Thank you. Our self-sufficiency is a point of pride. Anything else you want to know? You're right, they weren't here when we discovered Nellis. We found the guns at a huge weapon depot called Area 2, many miles from here. It took many weeks to drag the guns and their ammunition back to Nellis, and it was the last time any of us set foot beyond our homeland. Thank you so much. I'll be sure to pass that on. I wish everyone were just as interested in our story as you are. Maybe I should act out the battles, or learn how to throw my voice. See you later, alligator. This is a restricted area. State your business. Your being here is a start, soldier. We aren't exactly overflowing with troopers here. But if you really want to help us, talk to the idiot with sunglasses in the back of the plant building. He's been trying to get this place running for months and hasn't made any forward progress. 
Later.
Hello, outsider. Need something? An impressive piece of work. I'll keep that in mind if jobs come up in the future. No, those aren't for outsiders to use. Leave them alone. Well, if you genuinely care so much, they're flight simulators. If you don't know our history yet, you should see Pete and get the tour. We dream to one day rule the skies. See ya! You have done well to earn the trust of my people, child. I believe the time has come for you to show your value in full. The people have come to accept having you around. Find Loyal and ask him about our people's fondest dream. He will tell you what to do next. Pearl sent word saying it's all right to tell you about the lady in the water. A long time ago, long before the war that killed just about everything that ever lived, a bomber crashed not far from here. A bomber was a flying contraption that could drop explosives down on anything it flew over. But anyway, moving on. This bomber crashed down in Lake Mead, pretty damn near intact. When we got to Nellis, see, I found this article in a magazine all about it. There was another B-29 around here, part of a museum. Couldn't fly, but had a lot of spare parts, see? Get where I'm going? Since I was a young man, I've dreamed of raising that lady from the lake and bringing her back to life. What do you say? It's at the bottom of Lake Mead. I'll mark its location on your Pip-Boy map. Simple. Attach deployable ballast to the plane and float it on up. Here is a remote detonator. Once the ballast is attached to the plane, just hit the detonator from the shore and let buoyancy handle the rest. Good. Here's the deployable ballast. Go find the plane, attach the ballast, and hit the button. Might try holding your breath. If that doesn't sound good enough, talk to Jack. He was working on a rebreather once.
So you're the outsider. Lived your whole life out there, huh? Wow. I always thought you savages probably spoke a different language. But I hear you sound like us. All right. See you around. I hope. It's going to be a dream come true once you've raised that bomber from Lake Mead. That's tremendous. I'll transmit instructions to the robots to start packing up the plane to bring it back to Nellis. Hey, I'd better get rolling. Jack and I have a lot of work ahead of us. Friend, how can Mother Pearl be of help today? What you have done for us is a miracle, child. You have fulfilled the only dreams we ever had outside our walls. You are a trusted friend of us all. If there is ever a way for us to help you, child, tell me, and I will make it so. Of course, my child. After all that you have done for us, we would love to help you in the upcoming battle. After all the training and virtual reality, the young ones would relish an opportunity to put their skills to battle. We'll be there when you need us. Bye. Finally, I had to let her out. What? Hey, have you been able to bug Mr. House's network yet? Okay, no rush, but the sooner the followers can learn about Mr. House's technology, the better. Progress with the boomers? Well done. The boomers' firepower may prove an advantage when the battle for Hoover Dam comes around. Your next assignment won't take you far. It concerns the Omertas and their den of vice, Gamora. As the decisive encounter between the bull and the bear looms close, my concerns about the Omertas have grown. I've never expected loyalty, mind you. A reliably underhanded tribe is just as constant to deal with as one that always runs true. But that's just it. Lately, the Omerta's cooperative silence has been deafening. Not a single complaint. They're up to something. The Omertas are fanatically loyal to each other. Still, among any group, one can find the occasional degenerate. Gomorrah's receptionist happens to be one.
For years, she passed on whispers of what was taking place at the casino in exchange for payment. A few months ago, she clammed up. Odds are she's scared. But I've had no way of approaching her. Start with her. At this rate, one Securitron is gonna be enough to defend the whole strip. It's good to have a friend of the NCR here. What can I do for you? Goodbye. Hey, no one but Omeritas are allowed to carry guns into Gomorrah. Check your weapons with me. You'll get these back on your way out. Hello, and welcome to Gomorrah. What can I help you with today? Sorry. We don't have any hotel rooms available right now, but feel free to gamble or help yourself to our other services. Feel free to head to our club, Brimstone, or you can see our gorgeous courtyard out behind the casino. <sighs> I knew someone would call in that mark soon. What do you want to know? All I can tell you is to find Kachino. He's the lowest level lieutenant you're going to be able to talk to. Some of the girls say he's been involved in some shady business the family wouldn't really like. Ask him about it.
Bye. I got kicked out of Ultralux the other day. Man, that place gives me the fucking freaks. Welcome to Gamora. How can I help you? Have a good time and good luck. Hello and welcome to Gamora. What can I help you with today? I sure do, but loose lips <laughs> sink ships. All right, you look pretty trustworthy. Not much of a rumor, but I hear the Tops is always looking for new talent. Lord knows they've needed it for a long time. Bye. Hello, and welcome to Gamora. <sighs> Sorry, they don't tell me their plans, and I don't want to know. I'm just happy they don't make me fuck anybody anymore. <sighs> All I can tell you is to find Kachino. He's the lowest level lieutenant you're going to be able to talk to. Some of the girls say he's been involved in some shady business the family wouldn't really like. Ask him about it. Bye. Holy shit. You've been in Lucky 38. You meet the overboss on that. I hear you've been asking questions about me, dickweed. What the fuck do you want? Business. What the fuck do you mean, business? You looking to get yourself burned? Now you start talking real clear, and I mean fucking crystal clear, because I'm about to lose my patience. I don't give half a dick what you heard. Now get the fuck out of my face before I burn your sorry ass. You again. What the fuck do you want? Later. I'm glad they don't just let any motherfucker through the gate. Freeze. God, it smells like shit. You again. Where the fuck did you get that? Okay, listen, buddy. That's some dangerous shit you got there. That book can get me killed if the wrong people see it. Let's talk. What do you want? What can I do for you? I can't stop you, but that's gonna mean my death. I can make it with your while to give it to me, though. Plus, if you go to the bosses, I can't help you stop what they've been doing. Okay, you got me by the balls. Here's a couple hundred caps. Maybe that'll buy you friendship. All right, all right. I can't stop you, but I think we can help each other out. I know not at home in the NCR would be happy to get some dirt on the family. I can help you get that dirt, and you got me by the short hairs. Hey, hey, look. 
Yeah, I... I can pay you for it, of course. I also have some information about the family's business that you might find interesting. Between you and I, we can break up what they're planning, maybe save some lives. Mine included, of course. I know no Tell you, not hey, hey, yeah. Oh, here's some caps. Now, give me the journal. All right, there we go. So, let me tell you what I know about the family's business. The bosses, Big Sal and Nero, have been working for a while on this. They're arming themselves like an army using this new guy, Troik. They also brought in a specialist named Clandon. At least that's what they introduced him as. I got no fucking idea. They let him have the run of the place, though. He seems like a nice guy, but he makes me nervous. He's a little arrogant, but he's too nice. Too open. I've never seen him fucking a gambling. Everyone has a vice, but this guy seems like the Pope. Okay, toss him at me. He's a skittish little fucker. Spends half the day pumping his body full of chems and the other half pumping hookers with his willy. He has some kind of connections, so he's able to smuggle huge shipments of weapons into the Strip. The bosses got him by the short hairs. We covered up a hooker he killed while flying on some psycho, so he gets us guns in exchange for not ratting. Okay, you can find me here or upstairs in my room. I'll let the muscle know you're a friend of mine. That should let you get around a little easier. Not at home is gonna have his day. <laughs> Fiends are bad for business. NCR should do the fucking job. What the fuck are you looking at? If I wasn't working right now, I'd show you a real nice time. Good morning. Fuck not home. Must be cozy up there in the lucky 38.
Who are you? I didn't do anything. Leave me alone. Cachino? Cachino what? Are you kidding me? You must be trying to get me killed. Yeah? Well, fuck that. The bosses have my number and I'm a company man while they got the goods on me. Great. So I'm fucked either way. I guess I don't have any choice but to help you. Just try not to get me killed here. I don't see how that's your business. I'm just a guest here, having a little fun. They're keeping them in a little utility section down off the basement. I don't know what they're arming themselves for, but I know it isn't for the good of mankind. I'm pretty proud of myself. It's a stroke of genius if I could be so modest. The whole arrangement starts with an old buddy of mine in the Republic. He's responsible for packing and shipping supplies to the NCR on the Strip. He marks some containers as food and medical and packs them with guns and other shit. From there, it took just a couple of greased palms to get someone to let me cherry pick a container or two out of every shipment. Easy as pie. Okay, try and be fast about it. As a little pet project, I've been making some thermite. Thermite burns as hot as the devil's asshole and can melt through just about anything. I've been keeping it so if the family betrays me, I can hopefully do some damage before I end up dead or in jail. Hey, fuck you. All right. I'll place the fucking thermite myself. You get out of the casino for a bit. I'll take care of it while you're gone. I hear the Legion is moving some new tough muscle into the area. NCR better keep their heads down. What's your name? Check my moves, honey. You like it, huh? Hey there, friend. A bit of advice. You look like you could use some protection. Lucky for you, I got what you need. My stock and trade? All kinds of easy-to-hide weapons for slipping into and out of casinos. They won't give you a second glance. Take a look at these beauties. Welcome back to Gamora. I know you're good for it, but you're still gonna have to leave your weapons with me. You'll get these back on your way out. Welcome back to Gamora. Hey, what can I do for you? Yeah, poor fucker got himself caught after he melted all the guns. Bastard mentioned your name before they shot him in the head. Now the bosses want to see you. Alright, let's have him. 
No, just that it involves guns and muscle. Okay. I hear you've been making some waves around here. Hey, nice to meet you. Do you need help with something? Pacino. Yeah, I've heard the name. Not sure why he'd send you to me. Is he helping out with room service or something? A little bit of this and a little bit of that. I'm a close friend of some of the family around here. I do some independent contracting around the casino, and they set me up with this great room. Yeah, bye. Good to see you again. Hope you're winning some money in here. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah, bye. Hey, what can I do for you? Oh, is that right? Was that your handiwork? Well, I can't say I'm sad to see him go. He gave me the fucking creeps. Now we cut off the head of the serpent. Big Saul and Nero have to die. As long as they're alive, they can start up their plans again. All you've managed to do is stall them. I guarantee you they have contingencies. Hurry and get ready. I'll give you a gun when you get to the room. It's 
time for the meeting with the bosses. We can't chit chat right now. Bosses don't like no trouble in their place. Hey, here's that gun I promised you. I suggest using it while they are talking. Let's have I'm some sure words. Kill you after Take a talk. seat on the couch so we can get to talking. It's time for the meeting with the bosses. We can't chit chat right now. Take a seat on the couch over there. Nero and me want to have a. So I assume you know why we called you here. Yeah, we lost some guns, you little weasel. However, we can get more guns. You slowed us down, but you can't stop us. You're gonna die a failure. Are you shitting me? You didn't even know what the plan was. Yeah, as a last request, I guess we can give you that courtesy. Caesar asks us to provide a distraction on this trip, so when he gives the word, we're going to launch an all-out assault on this trip. First, we're going to blow the embassy, then we're going to use soldiers to kill every last motherfucker on this trip. Then we'll run this joint. That'll teach not at home what can go on while he sits in his fucking ivory tower lording down from on high. The fuck? I knew there had to be someone higher up helping you. Nero, you backstabbing, two-timing motherfucker. I knew this day would come.
What do you have to report about the Omertas? Well done. They won't be causing any trouble then. Your next assignment is to locate and destroy remnants of the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. The NCR nearly did the job at Helios 1 a few years ago, but there seem to have been survivors, unfortunately. Given the Brotherhood's fanatical views on technology, they can be counted on to oppose my regime. Please, put them out of my misery. Since 2278, I've lost five roaming Securitrons near Hidden Valley. I didn't receive any clear video of the incident, but telemetry from the units destroyed indicates they were attacked with energy weapons. It's obvious that the Brotherhood has a base in Hidden Valley or thereabouts. Finding it won't be easy, but getting inside will be the real trick. We're talking about a coterie of bulging-eyed fanatics who think all pre-war technology belongs to them. They'll never accept my using an army of robots to defend New Vegas. While it's a fight I can win, I'd rather sidestep it altogether. What did you want to discuss? That's because he ceased to be relevant when you recovered the Platinum Chip. Revenge doesn't interest me. Progress does. Sorry to deny you a moment of primate triumph, but you'll have to go elsewhere to sound your barbaric yawp. What else did you want to discuss? Goodbye.
Listen very closely and do as I say. Your life depends on it. And over everything you're carrying. Weapons, ammo, clothes, armor, everything. I want you stripped down to your underwear. There's nothing to talk over. You can strip down and hand over your equipment, or you can die. Will you comply? Take it all off and hand it to me. Then come inside and through the door at the rear of the chamber. Paladin Ramos is waiting for you. How the hell did you get in here? Normally I would have already shot you, but I'm under orders to bring you to the Elder. Will you come peacefully? Okay. I'll take you to him. Follow me. Closely. Or you'll be shot. How did you find us, stranger? And do tell the truth. You took an extreme risk in coming here. My policy towards trespassers has not been lenient. The security of this bunker is my foremost concern, and I take pains to minimize our exposure topside. For this reason, I might be interested in contracting with an outsider, who can accomplish certain tasks, some basic, some a bit more... involved. An NCR Ranger has begun to set up post in one of the other bunkers up top, for example. I want him driven off. Understood? Very well. I'll be interested to see how thoroughly and efficiently you carry out your mission. Paladin Ramos will escort you back to the bunker's entrance and set you loose. Notice that I said, loose, not free. You are not free to carry the secret of this bunker's location beyond Hidden Valley, until I'm convinced that you're capable and dependable. To underscore this point, you'll be fitted with an explosive collar. Wander off and it will detonate. Focus on your mission, and you'll be fine. You'll find your equipment in the chest to your right. Don't bother coming back until you've dealt with the Ranger. Thought you'd sneak up on me, you filthy powder ganger? Ha! Huh. Got some stones on you, son. I like that. What can I do for you? 
Dobbs is my name. I'm an NCR ranger operating out of Camp McCarran, north of here. Reading man by birth, though. Well, I thought I might set up a safe house in one of the bunkers here. Between the remote location and the dust storms, I figured it was ideal. Of course, it seems a lot less remote since you showed up. Plus, I haven't been able to get my radio working, and a safe house is no good without one. I reckon I'll stick around a while, patrol for troublemakers, see if I can get that radio working. Standard practice. Rangers operate on our own most of the time, and that's how we like it. Usually we call in our positions to McCarran to be relayed to other Rangers, but I can handle myself. I'm sure as hell not gonna lose any sleep on account of a goddamn broken down radio. But it will shorten my stay if I can't fix it. Oh, and in your expert opinion, why would that be? You've seen that with your own two eyes? God damn. I knew Cook's gang passed through these parts about that frequently, but I didn't know they hold up here. Be a rude awakening to find 15 of those merciless bastards looking down at me snoozing on my bedroll. Yep. I'd be better off setting up an ambush along one of their routes to catch stragglers. Thanks for the information. You may have saved my life. Stand back from the door. The Elder's eager to hear your report. How did you resolve the situation with the Ranger? Gone. Why did he leave? And what makes you think he won't be back? Yes, you exploited his fear of powder gangers very effectively. The collar includes a microphone, you see. Part of the test. He'll keep his distance, setting ambushes, never suspecting that these bunkers house something far more dangerous to him than criminals. Well played. Since you completed your assigned task, I will allow you to come and go from the bunker freely. So let's get that collar off you. There, that's better, I hope. Now that we have that bit of unpleasantness out of the way, there is a matter that I would like to discuss with you. Stop by the command room when you can. Oh, and bear in mind, if you end up betraying us, we will know it. And there will be no mercy.
How did you resolve the situation? God. Yeah. Bunker takes a little getting used to, doesn't it? Heard some special squad of rangers is on its way to the vape. Yeah? It's our virtual reality training hall. We don't really go out all that often anymore, so this is how we stay sharp. Later. When you first showed up on our doorstep, I'll admit at first I didn't know what to think. After giving the matter some thought, however, I've decided that an outsider could be of great use to me right now. However, I will not force you to help us. Should you refuse, you will be allowed to leave here. Though no, we will be keeping an eye on you. What do you say, outsider? Are you willing to help us? Then that is your choice. If you should change your mind, Please return. Have you reconsidered, Outsider? Then allow me to explain our situation. This bunker is currently locked down, allowing no entry or exit, with you being one of the few exceptions. In exceptional cases, teams are sent out to investigate sites or retrieve materials deemed too important to ignore. Three such teams have gone missing recently, and the news of their disappearance has not yet been widely spread to avoid undue concern. In order to maintain the peace and adhere to the strictures of the lockdown, I need to send someone else to discover what happened to them. I'm glad I can count on you. Oh, and one other thing. The patrols each had a holotape detailing their missions that you can use to track them. The shielding of the bunker prevents us from actively tracking them, but their positions should show up on your map once you get to the surface. Should our worst fears become realized, Please bring back all three of the holotapes from the patrols. Otherwise, bring our brothers home. I've given the order that you be given access to some of the equipment our scouts and patrols have scavenged over the years. You won't be allowed to purchase any prohibited equipment, but hopefully some of what's available will prove useful to you. So, you're the outsider that's been given leave to wander around freely. Desperate times call for desperate measures, I guess. Name's Harden. I'm the head paladin of this chapter, and I think we might be able to help each other out. I don't know what the Elder talked to you about, but I can tell you this chapter is in trouble. And he's at the center of it. 
Are you willing to listen to what I have to say? As you may have already heard, this entire base is under a state of lockdown. No one goes out except small patrols at night. Most of the chapter has been sealed in here for years. And those few who are outside when the lockdown was initiated are forbidden from returning. Morale has plummeted as time has gone by. And many of our current paladins haven't seen combat outside of training simulations. And all because of the Elder's explicit order that no one be allowed in or out. The only way things will change is if a new Elder is installed. I don't know. I've gone through our records dozens of times looking for a precedent regarding the dismissal of an Elder and come up with nothing. The people who are most likely to know how it could be done are also some of McNamara's strongest supporters. So they refuse to help me, which is why we're having this conversation. An outsider such as yourself would arouse less suspicion asking questions about such matters. The fact that the Elder has some tasks for you means his faithful won't suspect you, and you have a line open to the man himself. In short, you're in a perfect position to help me. Will you at least think about it? That'll have to do. I'd recommend going to see Ramos first. As head of security, he's more familiar with our protocols than anyone else here. You could also try to find something relevant in our data store, though last I heard Scribe Ibsen is having a bit of a problem accessing it. And if McNamara should give you any tasks, I'd ask that you kept me abreast of them. Report anything you find to me, and we'll move from there. Look, this isn't a great time. Oh, what the hell? It's not like we're making any progress. I'm Ibsen, and I hope your day is going better than mine is. Yeah, I'm in charge of keeping this data system up and running, but accessing it is a little, uh, touch and go at the moment. I could use some assistance, sure, but I highly doubt you have the technical background to help us deal with this virus. Yeah, some pre-war jackass with too much time on his hands apparently decided to inflict his misery on those around him. It's scrambling all the terminals here at the moment. Luckily, we only use this section for storing historical data. I suppose it couldn't hurt to get another pair of eyes on this. Maybe you'll be able to come up with something coming at it fresh. While the entire system is infected, the virus itself is spread across three terminals. The problem is that it keeps moving periodically. We'll have it nailed down in a terminal or two, only to have it jump to another set of terminals before we locate the third. What? No, that... that's brilliant! It would let us seal a portion of the virus to a particular terminal, even when the other parts move. Best of luck to you. 
I'll tell the others to take a break so they don't get in your way. Oh, and I'll keep track of when it jumps for you. To maximize your chances, wait for my signal before you begin. The virus just jumped. Find which terminals it went to. Instruments show some impressive power fluctuations coming from across the river. What's going on over there? Did you want to try isolating the virus? All right, I'll monitor when it jumps. When I give this signal, start checking terminals. Our instruments show some impressive power fluctuations coming from across the river. What's going on over there? The virus just jumped. Find which terminals it went to. That's it. We got it. The virus has been purged. You actually did it? If you don't mind my saying so, I didn't think you had a chance in hell of pulling it off. But I'm glad to be wrong for once. Thank you, my friend. Please feel free to access the data store at your leisure. I'm only allowed to give you access to non-classified topics, but it's better than nothing, right? I can understand how the man might be frustrated by the current situation. He's a take-charge sort of fellow. Standing around's not his strong suit. I myself often wish we could end this interminable stasis and begin moving forward again. Oh, all kinds of things. There was already information regarding the layout and systems of this bunker, but we've since added our own data as well. Prior to the lockdown, we had extensively scouted the surrounding area and compiled dossiers on nearby points of interest. Well, you'd have to get a senior level member of the chapter to unlock a topic for you. I've given you access to what I can, but that's not much. The majority of topics fall under Ramos's aegis, since they'd constitute a security risk. Good luck getting anything out of him. You might have better luck with another member of the senior staff. Try talking to them about it. Bye.
may I assist you? Your presence here, let's just say it's highly irregular. Outsiders aren't even allowed to know that our bunker's here, let alone come and go freely. You impressed Elder McNamara, obviously. He must believe that you'd be very useful. That's right. Nothing gets in or out of here without me knowing it. Normally, that would have fallen under my jurisdiction, but the Elder thought it provided good test for you, so I backed off. Under the lockdown, only essential personnel are permitted to enter or leave. That includes supply runners and high security patrols. All other personnel are forbidden to leave, and any personnel that were out there when the lockdown was enacted are forbidden from returning. Fine by me. So, you've been talking to Harden, eh? He's been looking for a way to usurp McNamara ever since the lockdown started. Don't get me wrong, he's a good man. But Elder McNamara has done all right by us. If it weren't for him, none of us would have survived at Helios. I'll tell you what I told Harden. There have been only a few cases of Elders being dismissed from their posts in the Brotherhood's history. And those involve crimes that someone like Elder McNamara is just not capable of. You can look it up for yourself if you want. I'll grant you access to that portion of the history section of our data store. See Senior Scribe Ibsen about accessing it. I'm sure someone's told you all this before. Several years back, we were running our chapter out the Helios One solar power station. Our elder at the time, Elijah, had some kind of obsession with the place, which is the only reason we stayed as long as we did. That place was hardly defensible, and we knew the NCR was moving in on us, but the elder refused to budge, insisting that he just needed more time. We never found out what he needed time for. Wave upon wave of NCR troopers hit us from all directions. We held out for a time, but we were grossly outnumbered, and they had more men than we had ammo. Eventually, our positions collapsed. Elder Elijah was nowhere to be found, so McNamara took charge and led what remained of us on a counteroffensive west. We lost a lot of men and women, but we broke through and made it here. Make no mistake, McNamara saved this chapter that day. Who was Elijah more like? He was our elder before McNamara. Bright guy, but just between you and me, he was a little off. Our mission is to recover and preserve the technology of the past, but Elijah wanted more. He sought ways to improve upon technology, make it better. When we found Helios One, he was like a kid in a candy store. He kept talking about the potential and a grand design never realized. He even insisted we set up our base there, against the objection of nearly every paladin. What followed is a whole other story. Later. I heard a special squad of rangers is on its way to the Vegas area. I guess the NCR is finally getting serious about fighting the Legion. Hello, you must be the outsider everyone's talking about. I'm Linda Schuller. If you ever need medical attention, this is the place to come. Yes, I handle all medical needs in the bunker. If you're ever wounded, I can treat you. For a fee. Normally I'd just be the base's medical officer. But my other duties say otherwise. We have equipment here to treat most physical injuries. 
lacerations, broken bones, that sort of thing. We also carry a full supply of antitoxins. You may have noticed the bark scorpions up above. Though tiny, their venom packs quite a punch. Treating scorpion stings is my most common procedure. I can also treat any form of radiation sickness you pick up out in the waste. No matter what stage, save the last. I'm this bunker's head scribe in everything but name. I supervise the research teams. I collate the reports. I attend the meetings. But for reasons beyond me, that buffoon Taggart still gets the title. And don't get me started on that little pet of his. Everyone around here knows what's going on there but her. Oh, I tried. The Elder listened patiently to my carefully constructed argument regarding why the buffoon should lose his position. Then he just as patiently explained to me that Taggart's work was vital to our cause, and that he wasn't to be trifled with lesser matters. But vital to our cause? Hardly. Bye. Word came down from the Elder that I'm to offer you some of our lesser wares, as if I didn't have other matters on my mind. Our patrols are always bringing more stuff in. Take a look. If you must know, my inventory check this week shows that our weapon count is one short. Somehow we're missing a laser pistol. Harden will have my head if I don't find that weapon soon. I can't delay my report to him any longer. If you happen to find it, bring it here right away. I might be able to throw a few supplies your way if you do. There have been reports that the NCR is moving more and more troops into the area. Reports say Mr. House's robots are now using tech we've never heard of. We need to send a team up there soon.
Then you bring your second unit up to provide covering fire, like so. must be the outsider everyone's buzzing about. Pleased to meet you. I'm Lorenzo, senior knight and general handyman around here. Bye. There have been reports that the NCR is moving more and more troops into the area. Scribe Taggart quickly realized my extraordinary talent when I took the mandatory VR combat testing. Soon after that, he requested that I get transferred to VR specialist training, serving as his assistant. I miss hanging out with the other students all the time, but at least I get to skip all those boring lectures. Yeah, a lot more. Back when we were at the Helio station... Oh, crap. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to talk about that. Especially with outsiders, so forget you just heard that, okay? Well, like just about everyone else here, I grew up in the Brotherhood. My father was a scribe and my mother a paladin. They both died at Helios I. The others were always like a family to me before that, but afterward they became my family in truth. Bye. There have been re Yes, what is it? Ah, the Outsider. I suppose it's too much to ask that Jarhead Ramos to keep Outsiders away from my research. I am Head Scribe Taggart, and I am much too busy to deal with the likes of you right now. How may I assist you? I heard some special squad of rangers is on its way to the Vegas area. I guess the NCR is finally getting serious about fighting the Legion.
There have been reports that the NCR is moving more and more troops into the area. Yes, can I help you? No, no idea. Sorry. Bye. Bunker takes a little getting used to, doesn't it? Now, who can tell me the primary components of gunpowder? Evening.
I heard some special squad of rangers is on its way to the Vegas area. I guess the NCR is finally getting serious about fighting the Legion. How may I assist you? Hello, outsider.
Have you destroyed the Brotherhood of Steel? Single-handedly destroying a Brotherhood of Steel bunker is quite an accomplishment. Platoons of NCR troops have died trying to do the same. This welcome news comes just in time, as events in the wider world are coming to a head. Aaron Kimball, the president of the new California Republic, is going to visit Hoover Dam to boost morale. Apparently, he hasn't considered the effect on the troops' morale of seeing their beloved leader get his brains blown out by a Legion sniper. I need you to make sure that no harm comes to President Kimball. It's fortunate that you've maintained good relations with the NCR. Simple. An NCR ranger named Graham is in charge of security arrangements for the visit. Present yourself to him. Let him know you want to help. Given your reputation, it's a near certainty that he'll accept your offer. Don't dally. The precise time of Kimball's visit is a closely guarded secret, but it will happen soon.
Is it me, or has the Brotherhood stopped engaging us? Smartest move they've ever made, you ask me. Our Rangers are going to show everyone what happens when we're pissed off. I've heard of you. I'm glad you're here to help us out. This is a delicate matter, and we need all the help we can get from people we can trust. We've got a lot to do to prepare for the President's visit, and not much time. Once we start, we'll be on a strict timetable. Are you ready? Good. The President doesn't arrive until tomorrow. Get some rest. I'll brief you in the morning. Glad you could join us. Most of my men are already on duty, and the crowd has already started gathering outside. We've got a busy day ahead of us. The plan is to get through today without the shit hitting the fan. So I'll be overseeing the security team personally, and keeping in constant contact with people over the radio. It's a good bet that the Legion is gonna try something today, so we have to be prepared for anything. We'll do whatever it takes to get the President through this visit in one piece. President Kimball is arriving shortly. If you want to do any last-minute security sweeps or take a look around for anything suspicious, do it now. Once you're ready, meet me outside on the observation deck. But don't take too long. Hello. We won't go quietly. The I'll meet you on the observation deck. Hey. Only engineers and authorized personnel are allowed upstairs. Please step away. Is it me or has the Brotherhood stopped engaging us? I'll meet you on the observation deck. I'll meet you on the observation deck. Have you finished your security sweep? Looks like that's his vertebrae coming right now. It's showtime. Let's not mess this up. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some security procedures to oversee. And it is because, because of you that I am able, able to do so. so. We enjoy our privileges because you take the greatest of risks and are prepared to make the most noble sacrifices. 
In this particular class, Jeremy Watson, the Nevada and the New California Republic remain free and secure. Born in a tin shack on the outskirts of one pine, Jeremy Watson never had any easy. His father worked as a caravan guard on the short road, and his mother, like many Californians, braved the ruins of the old world. Is it me or is the bro? I'll meet you on the observation. Have you finished your security? Is it me or is the Brotherhood stuff in caging us? Smartest move they ever made, you ask me. Under the laws of a just republic. 
This is the same fire that burned in the heart of the old world that preceded us. We are the heirs of that civilization, torturers eastward of the Pacific, into the darkness of this wasted land. When the Republic called the men and women of California to carry that fire across the Mojave, Jeremy Watson answered, You answered. Together you carried the weight. And when we have seen Watson's platoon came under attack at Forlorn Hope, he took the greatest risk. Not only for his fellow Californians, but for California itself. He was prepared to make the most noble of sacrifices to defend the principles of our Republic, even here, on Nevada soil. His actions are a meaning to all of us who stand here today in tribute to his valor. Private First Class Jeremy Watson, on behalf of the Senate and people of the new California Republic, it is my honor to present you with the Star of Sierra Monterey. Not far from this spot, a monument that dances. Coming to give a big fancy speech to all us troops stationed here at the dam. I'm pretty excited. He seems like such a nice guy, and I get to meet him. He's giving me a medal. I don't know why, though. I'm just doing my job like all the other guys. I'm still excited, though. Mama always told me not to talk to strangers. But you seem like a nice person. Mama left me on a farm when she went out prospecting. But when she never came back, the owner didn't want me around kicked me out on my own. A nice guy came up and asked me if I wanted to join the NCR, so I did. Now the troopers are my family. I like it here. Everyone is so nice. Bye-bye. You better get out of here. Watch out! Ah. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winner. Only engineers and all... No one can go upstairs. The president is visiting today. Ranger Grant doesn't want anyone snooping around up there that doesn't have authorization. Only NCR engineers or people with explicit permission from Ranger Grant are allowed roof access. Sorry, no can do. Okay, just this once. Make it quick, though. I don't want to get in trouble for this. job out there. Hey, you haven't seen my friend around here, have you? His name is Ben, and he's an engineer. We were supposed to meet up so we can watch the president's speech together, but he hasn't shown up yet. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just keep waiting. Sorry to bother you. Pretty legendary. People talk about what he did in the first battle of Hoover Dam with awe and respect. Hanlon is pretty legendary. People talk about what he did at the first battle of Hoover Dam with awe and respect. Hello.
sure hope I get to meet President Kendall. Is it true? Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a new Glad you're with winter. Us. I'm heading to Gamora next time I get some time off. I'm glad to see you. Mike Lawson sure knows his way around the dam. Trips all stirred up lately? Hey. It seems that the territories are about to blow up. I sure hope I get to meet President Kimball. Those Legion elite troops are bad blood. I'm honored to work with Lawson. He knows more about the dam than anyone.
below. Bye-bye. Show up soon. Morning. Hey, welcome aboard. Have you finished your security sweep? Looks like that's as... Now if you'll... We need to keep an eye out for anything suspicious.
that I am able to do so. We enjoy our privileges because you take the greatest of risks and are prepared to make the most noble sacrifices. It is because of men and women like Private First Class, Jeremy Watson, that Nevada and the new California Republic remain free and secure. Born in a tin shack on the outskirts of one pine, Jeremy Watson never had any easy. His father worked as a caravan guard on the short loop, and his mother, like many Californians, braved the ruins of the old world as a prospector. They suffered through water shortages, raider attacks, and the Brotherhood of War. Like our mighty Sierra Nevadas, they endured. But the time came when they could no longer shoulder the burden alone. Twelve years ago, they called out for help, and the Republic heard them. Troopers, rangers, just like you, answered the clarion call. Men and women stepped forward to say, I will carry the weight. And at Owens Lake, we made true on our promise, driving out the raider tribes to establish a lasting peace in the eastern Sierra Nevada. We carried the weight, and though we left behind many of our brothers and sisters on that battlefield, it did not break us. Ten years ago, Chief Felice met with representatives of the Desert Rangers to discuss terms of what would become the Ranger Unification Treaty. The treaty was more than a resolution to welcome the Desert Rangers into the Republic. It was a covenant to protect Southern Nevada against Caesar's legion and the tyranny of his regime. There are some back home who ask me, but who are we protecting? What is Nevada to us? Sometimes we forget that the light of our society shines beyond our borders. Sometimes we take those privileges for granted that our forebears fought so hard to achieve. We must always remember that wherever Californians stand, we carry our principles with us. Equal respect, representation, and protection under the laws of a just republic. This is the same fire that burned in the heart of the old world that preceded us. We are the heirs of that civilization, torturers eastward of the Pacific, into the darkness of this wasted land. When the Republic called the men and women of California to carry that fire across the Mojave, Jeremy Watson answered, you answered. Together you carry the weight. And when P.F.C. Watson's platoon came under attack at Forlorn Hope, he took the greatest risk. Not only for his fellow Californians, but for California itself. He was prepared to make the most noble of sacrifices to defend the principles of our Republic, even here, on Nevada soil. His actions are a meaning to all of us who stand here today in tribute to his power. Private First Class Jeremy Watson, on behalf of the Senate and the people of the new California Republic, it is my honor to present you with the Star of Sierra Monterey. Not far from this spot, a monument stands as a tribute to the sacrifice made by those who came before us. The men and women who fulfilled the promise we made to the Desert Rangers. Its back is inscribed with the names of the troopers and rangers who carried the weight. And because they made the most noble sacrifices, it did not break us. Four years ago, we held this dam. Four years ago, we carried the weight. Four years ago, we drew a line through the Mojave as clear as the Colorado River. A line that Caesar cannot cross. Today, you stand here with our brothers and sisters to hold that line. Today, you honor all Californians by carrying that weight. Today, you are the waves of the Pacific, pushing ever eastward. You are the sequoias rising from the Sierra Nevadas, defiant and enduring. You are the great western light of California, 
torchbearers in the darkness, living reminders of all that is best in our republic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
You're clear to go on through. Good job today. You got the president out safe and sound. I couldn't have done it without you. You have my thanks. Do you mind? Hey, yo! Bye bye. If not for you, President Kimball would be dead. So you needn't feel guilty when the NCR's route from Hoover Dam demolishes his political career. The Legion has nothing left to wait for. Their assault on the dam could begin at any moment. Before that happens, I'll ask you to complete one other task. It may seem trivial, but that's far from the case. Between the Strip and Helios 1 lies the El Dorado electrical substation. Humble as it appears, the substation has immense strategic value, for it's there that you'll jumpstart the Lucky 38's dormant reactor. Gain access to the substation's control room and install this override module. Just so you know, there are NCR troops guarding the station. With this accomplished, all preparations will have been made. The battle for Hoover Dam will be upon us before long. One of the ranger vets looked at me, and I just... Stay out of the control room and enclosure, or there's gonna be trouble. Got it? Just about surrendered. Stay out of the control room and enclosure, or there's gonna be trouble. Got it? Evening.
Have a nice day. As you can see, Vegas is humming along. I've tested my C3I broadcasting arrays. Everything is in order. And just in time, as it turns out, the forces of Caesar's Legion are on the march, establishing a staging area east of the dam. Their assault could begin at any moment, so that's where you'll be heading, if you're ready. Hoover Dam. Indeed they do. An army that'll be too distracted with killing legionaries to notice the real reason you're there. Your objective is to reach a control room halfway across the dam and install an override module similar to the one you used at the substation. The override will enable me to control the entire dam's power output. You may remember how the bunker at the fort was rather dimly lit. Well, just like the Lucky 38, it needs a big jolt of electricity to power up. You've already uploaded the new operating system to the Securitrons. All they need is power, and they'll be in fighting trim. We've accomplished a great deal, you and I. One last task and our work is complete. I'll see you in the control room. right there. No one is allowed into the control room. You shouldn't be here. It's best if you just move along. Damn it all to hell. Let's go. I knew you'd make it. Resourceful as always. The override module is functioning properly. I'm rerouting power to the Securitron vault at the fort as we speak. I just need you to head over to the east power plant and manually activate the switch. When you return topside, I think you'll see that my Securitron army is a little more than the Legion was prepared to handle. Oh, and before you go, 
Grab that printout spooling from the console here. Those papers set the terms for the NCR's unconditional surrender. I thought you might enjoy the honor of presenting them to the NCR's commanding officer once the Legion has been defeated. Cheers.
an envoy of Vegas, yet you carry yourself for battle. If so, you cannot truly be of that city of cowards. I see you fight with words, like all beneath the flag of the bear. Let us hope your skill with weapons proves greater. So you seek quarter, terms of surrender? Our roads into NCR are hung with the bodies of those who attempted to negotiate with us. Save your speeches. We will take Hoover Dam and move forward until our feet crush the setting sun beneath them. Hoover Dam has never seen the mass strength of the East. Only legates such as Graham deserve the fire Kaiser blessed him with. Now I am here, and make markers of your people as the Legion carves its way west. You speak in circles. What of the East? I am the East, and I will prove it this day. The victory here shall be swift. Our forces shall take the dam, secure it, then built a road west on the bodies of the NCR. The east will hold. Once across the Colorado, nothing to rival Hoover Dam remains. Your weakness? You seek to thwart me by claiming the Legion is too strong for you? That does not mean we would not succeed. The East was a hard-fought campaign. Even now, Kaisar drew too much of the Legion's blood needed there for this. Hoover Dam is but a place. I will not have it be the gravestone of the Legion, whether quickly, or as you describe, slowly, by attrition. As for wisdom, there is wisdom in your words, man of the West. Know that I shall return east. I shall not remain there forever. On that day, the strength of the bear shall be tested. If the West is one day filled with ones such as you, perhaps it shall be a worthy fight indeed. My coming would have saved you, set your people free in ways they cannot see. War would have tested them, broken the weak with its violence, yet allowing the strong to arise. Violence gave you that strength, awakened you. I can see it upon your face, where two bullets left their mark. Perhaps it is unfortunate Woolpex was not here to hear your words. Something tells me you would prove more than his match. Until the day when our armies meet again, Envoy of Vegas, I shall wait for you on the battlefield. Generate. Caesar on the cross. Been a long time since I've seen the kind of work you've laid down today. A damn long time. And the screams of those Legion bastards as they kick dirt running east like a choir of angels to my ears. Speaking of, that crazy light show over the fort? What the fuck was that? Some kind of thumb of God you called down? Amazing. Fucking amazing. Could use a hundred of you. Just scatter you over the east like jacks. Give those plum fucks the what for. What the hell are you on about? House? He's just a rumor on this trip. Never leaves this.
what is this Brahmin shit? I'm not getting the feeling we're all about to sing Kumbaya here. What the hell are you talking about? What is this? Free economic zone of New Vegas. What the hell does that mean? Oh, wait, here we go. Demands NCR's immediate withdrawal. Withdrawal? Like fucking hell we're withdrawing. We just held the dam. We didn't do it to let it go. This paper of yours isn't fit to wipe my ass. If you think after all that's happened, I'm going to grab my ankles and take it like the Legion. You know I won't surrender the dam, and certainly not to the Ghost Man of Vegas and his new Right Hand of the Week. We held this place for years. Kicked one legged out of here so hard, Caesar burned him to a crisp. It's our post. We fought for it. I'll fight for it again today. If you're looking to convince me otherwise, you better have a lot more reasons than you just telling me to go. True. Guess I'm a little too used to seeing Securitrons in Vegas to think they'd turn and be bad news. And I know how bad they can get. <laughs> Look. House. Vegas. It's pretty. Got you blinded a bit, maybe. But NCR's got perks, too. Think about it before you sign on with him. And if you say no, keep in mind what that means. NCR may have its problems, but when we're riled, watch out. Well, at least I can talk to you unlike that bastard Caesar and his plate-faced general. It'll do. Guess sometimes you get the bull, other times you get the horns. Still, at least some lives got saved this day. You know, I've had thousands of employees in my time. Few met my expectations. Fewer still surpassed them. Your performance has been nothing short of spectacular. If I have need for a specialist of your stripe again, I'll know just where to turn. Back to Vegas, shall we? I really should do something about that monorail with all the new resources at hand. I can make sure it not only runs, but runs on time. Always bothered me, the imprecision. No need to worry about the general, by the way. He'll be held responsible, publicly disgraced. 36.5% probability of suicide, by my estimate. Kimball won't be able to save him. He'll be too busy getting thrown out of office. But less than a 3% chance of suicide, mind you. Vegas might see a dip in revenue for a few months, half a year. But soon enough, the tourists and their money will be pouring in. Vegas will be a shining jewel in the middle of the desert, an oasis of light, a beacon to show mankind the way to the stars. This is just the start, you see. This is where it all begins. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. Mr. House's Securitron army took control of Hoover Dam and the Strip, pushing both the Legion and the exhausted NCR out of New Vegas. Mr. House continued to run New Vegas his way, a despotic vision of pre-war glory. The streets were orderly, efficient, cold. New Vegas continued to be the sole place in the wasteland where fortunes were won and lost in the blink of an eye. The Courier, fair and kind-hearted to those in the wasteland, ensured that Mr. House would keep New Vegas stable and secure for future generations. Mr. House afforded him every luxury at his disposal in the Lucky 38, out of gratitude and a quiet sense of pride for his choice in lieutenants. Black Mountain Radio continued to broadcast his peculiar form of propaganda. Raul Tejada faced his execution each day, though pardoned in the end. Travelers venturing too near Black Mountain continue to be harassed by Tabitha's followers. Mr. House showed little interest on the boomers, who eventually began venturing out to Nellis to meet and trade with travelers. Buried beneath tons of rubble, 
The Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel was no more. Those few who were outside the Hidden Valley bunker when it was destroyed settled into new lives, or headed west to find a new chapter to join. The Fiend staged an attack against Camp McCarran during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. During the NCR's retreat, the Fiends overwhelmed many of the troopers before Mr. House's Securitrons could deal with them. After Mr. House gained control of New Vegas, he sent a Securitron to Good Springs as a token of appreciation for helping the courier. Victor was a mixed blessing, however, as he continually monitored the town for Mr. House. With no cure for the Nightkin schizophrenia in sight, the disgruntled Nightkin left Jacobstown. Without a treatment, their insanity grew. The crazed Nightkin terrorized the wasteland, and Jacobstown suffered repeated reprisals from mutant-hating humans. In the end, the surviving mutants abandoned Jacobstown entirely, its existence quickly forgotten by the rest of the wasteland. Flush with his victory, Mr. House sent Securitrons into Freeside, thinking to increase his control over the area. When fighting broke out, the Kings fought valiantly, but were no match for the armored killing machines, and were wiped out to the last man. The NCR, battered by the loss of the dam, were unable to devote any troops to retaking the correctional facility from the Powder Gangers. As a result, Powder Ganger raids on caravans became an unfortunate fact of life in the Mojave for years to come. Armed with a wide array of improvised explosives and stolen weapons, the Vault 19 Powder Gang tormented the Mojave Wasteland for years. Citizens of the NCR were favored targets, and they always suffered the worst fates. And so the Courier's Road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes.